morning. This is Pastor Larry Allison, uh, Gospel Light Free Will Baptist Church, Bon Terre. Uh, we really are glad you've joined us again. Uh, here we are on Friday morning, and uh, boy, we've covered a lot of ground uh, this week, and really the last few weeks, uh, dealing with how to listen, uh, how to listen to God. Um, we're going to wrap all this up next week. I've got some things to share with you today, tomorrow, and next week. This will probably be one of the longest series. Uh, that we've taught. Uh, but I just think it's so important to have a, a right relationship with God. And you will not, you cannot do that until you learn how to really listen to him and uh, and know what he's saying to you and uh, know what he's expecting of you. And um, it's good to hear from God. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, our relationship, our our, uh, our Christianity, it would absolutely um, be lacking if we was not hearing from heaven. And so I want to hear from God. Uh, after we finish next week, uh, we're going to go into another series, and it's the other side of this coin, how to pray, how for you to talk to God. Uh, this is a, if you have anybody having a relationship, it's absolutely two-sided, okay? If you ever have a one-sided relationship, it don't remain a relationship very long. I can tell you that. So number one, we want to hear what God's saying to us. Number two, we want to be sure that we're having fellowship with God by our talking with God, our praying. Some people get all uh, tensed up. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. Uh, really, prayer is just as simple as I'm talking to you right now. Only in prayer, we're talking to God. We're sharing our heart, our needs, our supplications, our requests. Um, prayer is so important. Uh, in, in fact, if you go through Christian failures, most of the time, many times, it's because of a prayer failure on our part. So um, I think it's important to take this extra time that we're doing to hear from God and to talk to God. You learn how to do both of them and you will have a relationship with God, and uh, it'll be blessed. It'll be good. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. This is a verse we've already looked at on different occasions, even recently. I want to look at it one more time. There, this is a great verse, a great verse of Scripture, and it's referring to the Bible. It's referring to the Word of God, God's Word. Uh, by the way, the Word of God, the Bible, it is God-inspired, God breathed. As I read these words, this is the very word of God himself. This is scripture, all scripture. And listen what this scripture says, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture, that means all of the Bible, every verse from Genesis to the last verse of Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Again, that means God breathed, God word, and it's profitable. It's for our good. For what purpose? For doctrine. By the way, good doctrine is important. For reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. The Word of God will not only tell us where we're wrong, God will also, through His Word, tell us what we need to be doing. Okay? It's, it's a word of reproof. It's a word of correction. But then it's a word to instruct us in right living, in righteousness, and in holiness. So uh, this morning, what I want to think of for a moment, we want to, when we come to God, it must be openly. Uh, I mean, we, we want to be open to the voice and to the will of God. Uh, sometimes God's voice uh, through Scripture, uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through a godly person, through the Word of God. We've looked at this, remember? Sometimes God will bring comfort to us. God knows you better than you know yourself. God knows right where you're at. And uh, the, the several of you that are watching this right now, there could very easily, very possibly, be some of you right now going through a tough time, going through a difficult day, uh, dealing with things that you thought you would never possibly have to deal with. And the truth is, God may come to you today 
and realize that, you know what, you need an extra measure of God's comfort. And possibly through this devotion, possibly through your own prayer life, your own Bible study, God will bring you comfort today through the Word of God. But it's not always words of comfort. There's other times in our Christian walk where we need corrected. <laughs> I don't care how long you've been a Christian. There's just sometimes God needs to correct you. And so God will reprove you from the Word of God. God will correct you from the Word of God. And then God will instruct you in righteousness and tell you the things that you need to do. You know, when we think of being guilty of sin, sin in our life, rebellion against God, not doing what God wants us to do. There's the sins of omission and there's the sins of commission. Sometimes God is literally reproving you because there's something you're doing that's wrong. There's something you're doing or you've allowed into your life and it's sin. It's sin against God. And as you do that, you sin against God. And then there's other times we literally sin not because of something we've done. It may be that we've sinned because of something we did not do. There's the sins of omission, the sins of commission. And so God will reprove us when he needs to. He'll correct us when he needs to. And God will give us some instruction in righteousness when he needs to. So uh, there are times if, if God shows us something that's wrong, we need to repent of that. Genuine repentance. And any time repentance takes place, if it's real in your life, uh, you will turn from what's wrong and you will turn to what's right. You're going to change directions. <laughs> okay? If you're doing something God's not happy with, God's going to reprove you. God's going to correct you. You need to repent. You need to turn from that. And you need to turn to what's right. So there, then he instructs you in, in righteousness. Uh, so sometimes God deals with us about positive things that we need to add to our Christian walk. And then there's other times God will deal with us with some negative issues going on that really is bringing us harm. And really it's hindering our walk with God. And it's those very things we need to repent of, be forgiven of, and, and see that we correct things and get right with God. So when we come to God, we want to really be open uh, to the voice of God. It's always easy to listen to a word, as we've already said this, it's always easy to listen to words of uh, commendation, recommendation, encouragement. <laughs> you know, it's always good to hear somebody say, hey, you're doing a good job. But it's not so easy to hear somebody say, you know what, you're blowing it. You're messing this thing up. And when God does that, sometimes we want to kind of uh, clue him out. Sometimes we want to kind of turn God off. And, and so, uh, with that in mind, I want to kind of throw this word in there also. When we listen to God, uh, we want to listen attentively. Uh, I mean, I want to hear God, whether it's for my good or, or, or whether it's because of some bad that's going on in my life, even if it means God correcting me, even if it means God rebuking me. Uh, you know what? I need to hear that. I need to hear that. Um, God is doing that for my best interest. God is doing that to make me a better Christian. God is doing that to enhance our relationship with God. God is doing that to help us. And so let's uh, let's not take offense when God corrects us. Oh, let's yield to it. Let's be attentive uh, to the voice of God. Let's give God our full attention no matter what he's saying, okay? no matter what we need to do, no matter how we need to respond to walk in obedience, let's really be open and let's give God our full attention. You know, we've learned, uh, uh, husbands, we've learned through the years how to give the wife more attention when she's trying to tell us something. How many times, how many times, oh, I'll tell you, how, how many times, guys, have you been watching something on TV that may, maybe had your attention, something you're kind of listening to, you're watching, you're really, you're really clued into it, and the wife starts talking, and you've got a decision to make. Are you going to stay tuned into what you're watching and listening to, or are you going to just turn that off 
so you can listen carefully to what the wife is saying. And how many times, how many times, surely I'm not the only guy that's ever done this. How many times have we, and maybe not, maybe carelessly for sure, but maybe not even really realized we just kept watching and listening and, and, and she was talking and we didn't hear a word she said, did we? And finally, you know what she says? Did you hear a word I said? Oh, sure, honey. <laughs> Just hope she don't question you, right? Uh, no, we got to be honest. Uh, so, sometimes we don't hear what they say. Why? Why, why does that happen? Because something else has our attention, and we don't give the spouse the full attention uh, that he or she deserves. Uh, listen, God absolutely deserves our full attention. Regardless what else is going on, regardless what else has your attention, regardless what you're focused on, listen to me, please. When God speaks, his voice ought to be preeminent over everything else going on in your life. And if you're still clued in on what you're doing and you avoid God's voice, you've missed it. Oh, let's be attentive. Let's be open to the voice of God. So as he speaks through his word, through circumstances, uh, through his spirit, through others, man, let, let us have our spiritual antenna uh, on high, <laughs> right? Let's put it up high because I, I want to hear God over everything else. When God speaks, I want him to drown everything else out. Uh, everything else that God, and, and realize this, everything that God allows into my life, uh, I, I need to look for the fingerprint of God on that. Everything's for a reason. Uh, there's no accidents with God. There's no coincidences with God. Uh, I, what I need to be asking is, is, why did God allow this? What is God trying to say to me? What does God mean here? Uh, you know, uh, God, what are you saying to me? And many times God will absolutely reveal very clearly what he's trying to get your attention with. Well, listen, that, that's that's good teaching. Well, we'll kind of finish this up tomorrow, this part of our series. And uh, tomorrow, the 4th of July, uh, hard to believe already, but uh, looking forward to a good day tomorrow. Uh, Lord willing, we hope you'll join us in the morning. Have prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I count it a privilege to come before you in prayer right now. And Lord, when you speak to us, uh, and you do, oh, we want to be attentive. We want to have our antennas up. Lord, we, we want to hear clearly what you have to say. We don't want to miss it. We want to hear it. And Lord, even through your word, when sometimes you, uh, you have to correct us, it's good to know that you don't just correct us and leave us there. Lord, then you instruct us in your righteousness. You not only tell us what's wrong and what we need to repent of, Lord, you tell us what's right and how to fix it. So God, I pray that maybe somebody watching right now, and Lord, they really need an extra measure of your grace today. Oh, I pray would you bless them? Would you help them? Would you draw them close to you? We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You have a real good day. Uh, it's Friday, end of the week, payday for some of you. Uh, have a good evening. Lord bless you, and we hope to see you in the morning.